Are you ready to be transported, Rick? Are you ready to be transported? Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions to Edith. I'm Corbin. I am Rick. Can you follow us on Instagram, Instagram Twitter, Twitter, and all. Juicy content. It's so juicy. <laughs> Careful with the juice. <laughs> And today, uh, we are, uh, please follow us on, did I say that already? Instagram? No, you didn't talk about, do the mumbling thing my dad hates so much. <laughs> and then flip him off. Hey, John, John, John. There you go. Uh, Just for you, dad. We are reacting to some classical Indian singers. Great, that'll get blocked. No. No, like live oh, performances. We're, okay, I thought, when you said that, I thought we were talking about like a song from the 1960s. Yeah, no, we've, uh, we've actually reacted to both these singers. It's a, it's a duet kind of thing. Not just, not classic, classic call. Oh. I just saw the name. Yeah, Koshiki Chakraborty. Who did, I think, one of the first ones we reacted one to. Of, maybe the from, first one. From Debar. I Festival. think so, yes. And she did the Beautiful Afternoon or the Wonderful Afternoon. We've also done him as well. Mahesh Kale. Mahesh Kale. Yes. We've done one of him. He was fantastic as well. Bring it. Uh, but yes. So are you ready to be transported? I just hope it's at least 12 minutes and 54 seconds long. I think that's, that's exactly that's that. That's exactly. How does he do it? The mind powers of the man. But here we go. You're right. Let's get transported. What was your stand for? Oh, you already transported. I was already transported. Nice little intro there.
Yeah, that long <laughs> thing was a single breath. How do you learn something like this? It seems like a lot of it's improvised. Years of work, yeah.
ending made me want to be a whirling dervish. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> like, wow. Was that all in one breath? <laughs> sure felt that way. <clears throat> it's one of those things that you just, mm. you don't know what to say. You're just like, that was, that was incredible. Yeah. I just, we talked about this before when we were first introduced to some of this classical music. The, the, you know, the biggest, starkest <clears throat> difference between Eastern and Western music is the fact that I always make the comparison. Just think about Western music in terms of just 88 keys on a piano. And if you're looking at the 88 keys on a piano, you've got half steps and whole steps, and that's pretty much it. The only time Western music really goes in between those notes, because they do exist, are when you're doing affectations, like you're doing a bend. And we're most commonly hearing that if a violin is doing some kind of a bend, a or an electric guitar is doing some kind of a bend. Eastern music, Indian music, lives in those in-betweens. Mm -hmm. They And not only live, they play around in there. They like go hide and seek in there. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, there's, it also reminds me, I think I've said this before in one of the reactions, is that they've done studies of the vibrational frequencies that are coming out of distant galaxies and stars, and they give off resonances that have uh, notations musically. So the, the, the universe is actually giving off music, mm -hmm. sound, at a constant pace that resonates within the harmonic series, and there's just, they say that space is silent, but when you have the instrumentation to hear it, it is actual, the universe is sustained within this context of musical modality. Mm -hmm. No music I've ever heard seems to resonate within that musicality and that notality of the universe like Indian classical music. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what blew the minds of the Beatles so much because they felt that they had understood and they did Western music when they went to the East. It's why when you listen to the music of the Beatles from 62 to 66 and then 67 to 70, their minds were completely exploded open by going mm. to India. The, the, their music, you can hear it. Their experimentation, uh, especially George Harrison, I mean, he was profoundly changed yeah. by the experience. Now, how can, you, how can you not be if you're an art lover? Yeah. Uh, and then both, both these singers are <laughs> just... Obviously, we, we, we're familiar with both of them, but this was, <sighs> a, especially for emotion. Kale, he, man, he has a, an insane range. Really does. I, and also, I want to know how you actually learn, because I, I know it's years and years and years, but like, I'm just familiar with Western music. You learn a song, you learn the beats to it, and you learn yeah, where to Yeah, you go into words. choir and you can have vocal lessons. Mm -hmm. you, but how do you know, like, like, the little, I don't know what it's called that they do, but that amazing thing that they do that, uh, 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 I don't know what it's called, mm -hmm. and if I do it, it sounds like absolute just <laughs> garbage, guttural sound. Exactly. But then it sounds like music, uh, because it is. Uh, and I just don't know how you learn like the the notes for that and how I, you <clears throat> it practice. I'm sure it's the same. It's the same thing behind people. And is it all improv? Is it? I think it's a lot like jazz, where in mm -hmm. where in jazz, uh, a lot of what you do is written and a lot of what you do isn't, and you're just feeling each other instrumentally. Gotcha. And you just go from place to place, and you need to know the scales, and you need to know. Uh, rhythm syncopations and stuff so that it's just second nature but this tr transcends that like for example if you're driving in the car and you hear the best of the best of something musically we've been introduced to right whether it's something in jazz or let's say just vocalists that we know in western music you're listening to Journey right mm -hmm. I can't sing what, what Steve Perry's singing but I can mimic it pretty close mm -hmm. you know I can put my falsetto on and I can stay in rhythm and gives you this kind of false sense of I bet if I trained, I could learn that. <laughs> Never in a million years. The amount of I would I would like to learn how, like just the basics <laughs> of it, like because I actually from last time we saw it, he he's actually a teacher. He teaches. Uh, that would be a fun thing. That to would be fun. Do. Right? I, that would be really fun to like get a vocal instruction class, like get a couple of those as something to experience and just be taught some of the very first things. Because they do everything from the falling in and out and getting back into the tonic, which is the main note. Like, for example, if everybody's settling on whatever the note is, that's considered the tonic. Mm. I don't know if it's referred to that in Eastern music, but it is in Western music. And then they'll, they'll go in and around that. But in addition to that, they do all of the different things. <laughs> vibrato? <laughs> Hold my chai. They go way beyond vibrato into those... Uh, it's just... 
Uh, yeah, I would like to learn like a little unbelievable, like a little quick lesson of how, like, just how you start. Yeah, to learn to the, do that. Yeah, the closest we get to that here in America is called yodeling. <laughs> uh, we, we don't have anything that comes remotely close uh, to that level of skill uh, in the voice. I can't do it. There's uh, even opera singers uh, don't do that. Uh, God, I can't. Because he goes, it. uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's like the thirty second. And it's all in, you, it's uh, all on pitch. Uh, I don't know how he does And it's it. all on pitch. Yeah. I don't get how they do it. They're both brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Gifting from God yes. and training out the wazoo. Yeah, that was incredible. Thank Let you. us know more, uh, more stuff like this we could react to because you know we love it.